Over the last couple of years, sometimes people will get in touch with the Scottish Family Party from different parts of Scotland and will say, how about having a meeting in your locality? And then we've had meetings uh, all over the place in Scotland. That's been really good. Well, last year, Stornoway got in touch and said, how about having some meetings in Lewis? So that was fantastic. So I went over. The first time I went, I remember sitting in the ferry waiting room at Ullapool. And I took my phone out and had a look. And my phone was going crazy. There was all sorts going on. The venues we'd got booked were cancelling us. Uh, the local LGBT group was protesting. The local media were taking an interest. There was even talk of a hostile welcome committee being there for me when I got off the ferry. It didn't actually uh, actually take place, but there was talk of that. So I was I thought, what am I going into here? And some of the ferry journeys themselves could be quite exciting too. So we had meetings in a few different locations. I went over a few different times as well. Met people in uh, in different places too. Really interesting. I think the biggest meeting we had in Stornoway, I think about 60 people there. I met a couple of councillors, independent councillors, and all, all sorts of other very interesting, supportive people uh, over there in the Western Isles. Now, when I spoke at the meetings we had there, a very common response was that people didn't realise quite how bad things are in terms of the actions of the Scottish government and the lack of opposition to them from the existing Holyrood parties. And as usual, one of the standout issues was the Scottish government's appalling relationship, sexual health and parenthood educational resources on the rshp.scot website. Now, just after my visits to the Western Isles, I made the series of videos on those. A lot of people on the Western Isles watched those and it generated a significant amount of local concern. Now, eventually it got to the stage where the local council consulted about uh, sex education, basically, in the Western Isles. Education Scotland, the government, had been putting a bit of pressure on them, saying it wasn't quite good enough, and they wanted them to make it, well, frankly, worse. Um, but, but the council consulted, and the responses to that consultation, a lot of them were fantastic. If you're watching on YouTube, at the end of this video, I'm going to read through some of them. You can hear them for yourself. Some pretty fierce and fiery responses from parents, teachers, and pupils. Then what happened was a local campaign sprung up. A lot of, uh, well, you know, some S Scottish Family Party activists and supporters played a key part in that. Uh, the Church of Scotland Presbytery in the Western Isles weighed in as well, saying they disapproved of John Swinney's sex education resources. And the other church leaders made their feelings clear as well. The Christian Institute had some input as well. And eventually the council took a vote on it. Were they going to use the appalling, corrupting and vulgar sex education resources produced by the SNP or were they not? Uh, Councillor Callum McLean put forward the motion, well done him. And they decided 23 votes to four that they would ditch John Swinney's appalling resources and use something different instead. Well before this, the National Health Service on the Western Isles had contributed money to producing these resources that now the people and council of the Western Isles have comprehensively rejected. So it was a bit of a waste, waste of money, wasn't it? So a bit of a lesson for the NHS on the Western Isles there. Might be an idea to consult to try and gauge local opinion before just following the crowd. There's also money being invested in producing a Gallic version of these sex education resources. Probably a lot of that would be to do with uh, use in the Western Isles. Well, they can forget that now as well. Now, you may think, well, the Western Isles is very unrepresentative. It's not really like the rest of Scotland. There's some truth in that. But I think the biggest relevant factor here was the fact that people were so informed and aware of what's going on. So what do they choose to use instead? What's the council opted to use? They've chosen to use the resources from the Catholic Education Service. Now, you know the reputation of the, the, the free church, etc. in the Scottish Highlands, real sort of doer anti-Catholics. Well, this doesn't really fit with that image, does it? They're quite ha happy to see that the Catholic resources are far and away superior to the SMPs. I think a really important point to make at this point is that, okay, on the Western Isles, parental pressure, teachers, etc., the pupils' voice, fantastic. The kids there have been protected from this corruption and damage to their well being through appalling sex education. So that's great. You've protected your own kids. Uh, now, sometimes I speak to, for example, Muslim groups, and they'll initially have the agenda, how do we protect our kids from this? 
and other people, other Christians have in other parts of Scotland say, how can we protect our kids from this? Which is a perfectly valid point of view. But I then say, what about everyone else's kids? It's all very well to look after your own, but surely polit in politics, you don't say, oh, well, I protected the locals. What about the rest of them? Well, who cares what happens to children in the rest of Scotland? That's a really important issue as well. So as well as looking after your own, I hope the people in the Western Isles are not going to inflict the same sex education on the rest of Scotland by continuing to vote for the SNP. Now, in the election next year, everyone in the Western Isles, and all over Scotland, will be able to vote for the Scottish Family Party. On the regional list, we'll have uh, candidates in every region. And it would be nice to have a candidate in the Western Isles as well in their constituency. Uh, we've got quite a few people who would have been really good in that role. None of them are quite in the position to do that next year. But hopefully someone will emerge. I imagine you know, maybe even a very young person might be ideal to fit the bill there. But let's see how that develops. So this is a good news story, very much. But in the longer term, I'm afraid there are reasons to be pessimistic. What's going to happen when the inspectors start coming to the schools in the Western Isles and start saying, we feel there's a bit of a weakness here. And when they write their inspection reports, they're not going to say, this school is failing to indoctrinate its pupils in the way that we want. They'll say, this school's uh, got a development need in the area of equality and diversity. And the pressure will be applied. The idea of LGBT inclusive education, where you have LGBT content in every subject, from nursery all the way through the education system, John Swinney said, if schools don't do that, he'll make it a law that they have to. So if you're going to vote SNP, you're going to get that. I would really emphasize that. The people who responded to the, the consultation in the Western Isles were very unhappy with that. The SNP is saying it will be enforced by law if necessary. OK, so if you keep voting SNP, then this is going to be a short lived uh, victory. Also, the Scottish government's in the process of producing new guidance on sex education. We can't exactly be confident that that's going to be a step in the right direction, can we? Once that guidance is introduced again, that will become law, that will become mandatory, and schools will have to follow it. Now, I think in the SNP, there's a little bit of an attitude of, you know, the Western Isles are different. Let's not rock the boat. OK, if they're five or ten years behind, we can sort of put up with that just as long as they keep electing representatives and we don't really want to make a fuss. But ultimately, the Western Isles will be forced to go in the direction of the rest of the country. The pressure will be applied. And the way things are looking, when things are made law or mandatory, then the council will be powerless to stop it. Now, I think this whole story is like so many other things in Scotland. When I arrived in Stornoway, the feeling was that there was a really hostile reception or controversy, people up in arms that I, I was, you know, daring set foot on the island with my extremely controversial views. And yet now we can see absolutely on this particular issue, I was representing the majority view in the Western Isles. I gave a voice to that. I provided information and helped people to see the situation. And that's a really important thing to remember in Scotland. If you feel like you're the lone voice and you, you're made to feel you're some sort of wild extremist beyond the bounds of reasonable public discussion, then it's still quite possible that you're representing the majority of people. Now, during the campaign against the RSHP resources in the Western Isles, I made a video to help the campaign, uh, just commenting on some of the consultation responses. And this video wasn't published during the campaign, but I'll publish it now. And you can just listen and enjoy it's wonderful to hear the views of parents, teachers and pupils when you hear them directly, not filtered through the National Parent Forum of Scotland or a Scottish government consultation, just the raw opinions of parents, teachers and pupils in Scotland. Now, if you're watching on Facebook, I'm not including it with the Facebook video, but there'll be a link to the YouTube video and you can watch it there. If you're on YouTube, watch and enjoy. Education Scotland says that PSE, personal and social education, needs to be improved in the Western Isles. Now, if I was in charge of education in the Western Isles, I would think that's an indication that the PSE 
it's probably actually pretty good. Because education in Scotland has got sort of such a twisted idea of what constitutes good personal social education that you probably should ignore what they say. But anyway, because of education in Scotland's criticism, the council is looking at a review of personal and social education. So part of what they've done, they've done a bit of research, asking the pupils what they think are the most important topics to look at. And they gave them these choices. These choices, they really come from the government. But anyway, so the 12 key topics that children need to learn about to prepare them for adult life. Let's have a listen to what these 12 are. Careers, fair enough. Relationships, that sounds okay. You don't quite know what the government might mean by that, but okay, relationships. Emotional and mental health, well, okay. I think sometimes a bit of an overemphasis on that. A bit therapeutic, but anyway, okay. Uh, bullying. Again, I think that can go a bit over the top and be counterproductive, but okay, fair enough. Substance misuse. Um, I think it's called drug abuse, actually. Now, that's a perfectly valid topic to have. But you have to wonder what the message is going to be. Because the message the government wants delivering is something along the lines of, you know, when you take drugs, you know, you need to be careful how you do it, otherwise it'll be quite dangerous. And I once heard a police officer talking to 12-year-old boys saying, if you take this drug, make sure you have plenty of water with it. Otherwise, it's quite dangerous. Anyway, what else have we got in these 12 vital topics? Uh, race. Okay, I'm not sure that's really a vital topic to study. You fear that it's going to be leading the pupils into sort of identity politics mindset. And then hate crime. What hate crime is one of the 12 vital life skills that young people need? I mean, it's just bizarre, isn't it? Right, next one, disability. Okay, fair enough teaching them to empathise and understand uh, challenges faced by disabled people. Uh, that's fine. Sexual orientation, one of the 12. Might be a bit of an overemphasis, but okay, fair enough. But the important question is, what's the message going to be about it? Marriage and civil partnership. And now again, the important thing is, what's the marriage? What's the, imp what's the message? Now I would say, if they're going to teach the meaning and importance of the institution of marriage and its purpose and outcomes, fantastic. But it wouldn't be that. If you look at the government's resources, what they want teaching is, um, well, uh, gay people got civil partnerships at such and such a time, then they got gay marriage, and now heterosexual people are going to be, have, be able to have civil partnerships, and that's great and that's progress. Isn't it wonderful? That's what the message would be, unfortunately. Right, next topic. Pregnancy and maternity. Pregnancy. I mean, do you really need to teach school pupils that we're expecting to need that they're going to need to know about pregnancy and maternity how to be a mother what about how to be a father is that not equally important i mean are these not things best left to the family well the government's line is the problem is families have got very old-fashioned values and they don't know the latest expert techniques so much better for the governments to teach them how to be parents etc right another one of these 12 key areas that pupils need to learn about gender reassignment now the scottish government wants to push this idea plant this idea in the minds of all young people and the idea that changing gender is natural normal and healthy i mean it's as irresponsible of the government as having lessons where they say you know some people smoke some people don't smoke if you feel you might be a smoker you know we'll provide you with some cigarettes and help you down that road i mean it's totally bizarre anyway that's one of the 12 vital topics now, the council claims to have listened to people's views on this, but obviously they've listened to the views within those very tight parameters of those 12 topics given. But if you're teaching pupils what they're going to need in later life, is it really that helpful to be asking the pupils? I mean, in a sense, they're probably not going to know what they're going to need in later life because they haven't experienced later life. I mean, adults probably have got a better idea of what's going to be useful information for them. But from this survey of pupils, one thing came out very clearly that the pupils were pretty heavily against having lessons about transgenderism. So, well done pupils. They can see that it's unnecessary. Uh, it's just a shame the government can't see it as well. In this survey, also parents were asked, how beneficial do you think PSE lessons are for your pupils? Is there really much value in that? How much do the parents know about what goes on PSE in PSE lessons? Probably not very much. Anyway, what other topics might have been uh, helpful to include instead of transgenderism and hate crime? How about managing your finances? How about housing, mortgages, rental accommodation? How does that all work? Democracy, how the government operates. 
the law, the legal system, how businesses function, citizenship, your responsibilities as a citizen, about some moral values, some virtues, honesty, good manners, about learning about the emergency services, the police, and about the NHS as well. So you really appreciate them and cooperate with them. What about uh, learning about how to stay physically healthy? I'd say all of those are more important than transgenderism and hate crime. But anyway, a big focus of this review that the council is undertaking is to decide whether or not to use the rshp.scot sex education resources in the nurseries, primary schools and high schools in the Western Isles. So that's been under discussion. Now in this report from the council, it says this, it says evidence shows where the resource is well used, there is delayed initiation of sexual intercourse, increased frequency of sexual intercourse, a decreased number of sexual partners and reduced risk taking. So the claim that this resource that was only introduced last September has had these positive outcomes is of course total, total nonsense because they're in the report. Notice the way it's wor worded as well. Where the resource is well used, it has these positive effects. So assume from that where these positive effects are not apparent, it's not because the resource doesn't work, it's because it hasn't been well used in those cases. But the whole idea this has been assessed with this sort of research is just got no credibility at all. So the, the council's consulting about the rsp.scot resources is a little bit vague that that's what they mean. But ultimately, I think that is an issue at stake. And I think the council is going to look at that in the future as well. So in this consultation, they've got a lot of feedback, feedback from pupils, from teachers and from parents. Now, I'm going to read you a selection of it because there are some absolute gems in it. Just wonderful statements. Uh, now, I'm selecting particular ones. There's a lot of other ones I'm not going to read out. But the ones I'm reading out, they are reflective, I would say, of the majority opinion of the feedback received. So let's have a look what people have got to say. All right, this is a statement from a, a pupil, 15 to 16 years old. We do a lot on mental health and I feel like everyone is becoming very oriented around it and it makes you start feeling stress and worry. As long as we know where we can go to talk, I don't think we need loads of people coming in to discuss about it and loads of lessons about it. We're also taught about immigration and refugees very often. It's interesting, but not after a few weeks. Now, the mental health one, I've mentioned that already. In Scottish schools, there's a bit of an obsession with a therapeutic culture where you're implying to pupils that they, they sh should expect to need professional support and should expect you know, mental health problems to be a normal part of their, of their weekly routine. So again, it's a matter of balance. There's a place for it. But this pupil recognises, as I do, that it's out of balance at the moment. All right, some more comments. Now, these comments are from teachers, but they're about... Um, PSE from a pupil's point of view. Right, one complains that they're having to push the LGBT agenda all the time. Right, that sexual abstinence is not viewed as important. I strongly disagree with the LGBTQ inclusive aspect in school, as well as gender reassignment. In my opinion, this has no place in schools and should be omitted from the curriculum at once. It only confuses children at a time when their emotions and hormones are they're already dealing with the challenges of puberty, and this type of topic will only do damage. I also think race should be left out of school. It seems the most material used for educating only appears to demonise white people, which in turn creates more racism and also teaches people to self-hate. So, wow, there's one teacher recognising there's a politically correct agenda. Uh, another comment from a teacher. Inappropriate information regarding sexual activity and pornography. Absolutely. I have huge concern that Christian pupils... Oh, this is a different teacher. I have huge concerns that Christian pupils have been force-fed views that greatly differ from their identity. At the moment, the direction of travel is that Christian pupils need to either conform with something they do not believe or to be silent. This should not be the case in an inclusive education system. Being a Christian is not currently legal, but it's getting to the stage where our education system is suggesting that it should be. Spot on, sir. Or madam. Right, next one. Uh, get back to promoting a traditional healthy lifestyle instead of promoting sexual and social anarchy, which will poison and destroy the country's future generations. Now, by the way, if these teachers actually said that with their name to it, if they published that, on Facebook or something, they'd probably be struck off by the General Teaching Council of Scotland for talking that sort of sense. Another teacher. 
Transgenderism and gender expression. Transgenderism needs to be taught in context. It's a minefield of an issue, especially with teenagers who already struggle with their personal identity and knowing their place in the world. I worry that it might be too easy to decide one is transgender and be pushed down the roots of hormones and all sorts. I'm probably not going to be very popular for saying this. Well, it depends who you mean popular with. You won't be popular with anyone who's sort of kowtowing to the government's agenda or the inspectors. But you'll be popular with pupils and parents and lots of other people as well. Um, I was one of those teenagers who did struggle to know my place at school and in the world. And as an adult, I've realized I'm actually a lesbian. Sometimes you need to be careful what's said, perhaps. Absolutely correct. Right, what's this? Another uh, teacher. Um, they need to teach about the importance of the roles and responsibilities of a mother and father in a child's life. There's another teacher whose registration with the General Teaching Council for Scotland would be dangling by a thread if they said that publicly, but spot on, excellent point. Uh, another one. Uh, respect for Christians and people of other faiths. Respect me policy statement should be at the core of this. Currently, there's a massive drive towards describing anyone who does not support same-sex sexual activity as a homophobe. That must be stopped. If we're truly to be inclusive, then there needs to be education with a PSE and across the curriculum to make students aware that it's okay to have different opinions. Pretty radical view. And that just because you have a different view, it does not mean that you hate each other. Uh, there should be... Uh, there should also be education for LGBTIQ plus peoples to explain their need to respect people who do not agree with them. That's an extremely radical, sensible suggestion. Staff are also worried about teaching morals uh, to which they have a fundamental objection. Information from authorities can be presented as fact when actually it is not. Absolutely. Uh, will teachers face possible prosecution if they teach what is required, but also express a view that's contrary to government guidelines. Well, if they express a view that's contrary to the sort of politically correct uh, Scottish government line, they're very likely to lose their job and be struck off as a teacher at the very least. I do not think LGBT needs to be pushed as hard as it is. Why isn't there the same push to promote heterosexual marriage? Good point. Uh, why not focus on all minority groups rather than just LGBTQI? Right, because the government doesn't fund as many sock puppet charities uh, arguing the case for other minority groups. I'm slightly concerned about the pressure some teachers could find themselves in if, e.g., religious organisations send letters to schools. One was recently received urging head teachers to resist the implementation of parts of the RSHP curriculum. Although staff have a duty to inform pupils, at times this may go against their own beliefs, and it is important that their personal views are not shared. Ah, we have a teacher who I would agree with uh, less on this case. So they're saying in some schools, you know, that people try and interfere, these religious organisations, maybe churches, they say, for example, we don't want the school to promote pornography to the pupils. And this teacher is saying staff have a duty to promote pornography to pupils because they've got to follow the curriculum and it's very important that these staff when that while they're promoting pornography they mustn't give their own view that they actually disagree with that message because that would be that would be very unprofessional it seems i feel we as teachers could well be putting ourselves into situations from which future litigation could arise having seen our local council being accused by one person for letting him change his gender Absolutely. I think there'll be a slew of court action in a few years' time when people say they were led down this path before they fully understood what was going on and the school is therefore to blame for their current predicament. Right, next teacher. Gender reassignment, gender identity. I feel the Scottish Government's RSHP policy is conflicting with the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child which states in Article 14, Freedom of Thought, Belief and Religion, Governments must respect the rights and responsibilities of parents to guide their child as they grow up. Right, spot on. Teacher there, that's absolutely correct. I actually reported the Scottish Government to the Equality and Human Rights Commission and said the government is contravening that regulation in it with its policy of LGBT inclusive education, which is deliberately designed by putting it in every subject so parents can't withdraw children from it. And the Equality and Human Rights Commission inevitably replied and said, oh, well, the right doesn't really quite apply to, to this situation. 
as always. Right, next one. Uh, any teacher holding a religious persuasion, Muslim, Jewish, Christian, that marriage and sexual relationships should take place between one man and one woman will have difficulties teaching some of the issues above. Yeah, that's maybe a slight understatement. I mean, it would just go completely against their conscience. I don't think teachers should be forced to discuss non-relevant topics such as gender reassignment and LGBTQ inclusive education. Uh, inappropriate information regarding sexual activity and pornography is included. To right, inappropriate is uh, an understatement. It's a lot stronger term than that, but that certainly is there. I feel there's been very little consultation on the new PSE curriculum. It's not inclusive and takes away the right of parents to express their beliefs and guide their children as they see fit. I think this might be parents right in here. That's absolutely true. All peoples have value, and the particular focus on LGBTI is giving the message that a particular group of people have more value than others. That is also true. LGBTI inclusive education, is to, uh, sorry, LGBTI education is totally relevant, should not be included as part of the school education. I do not want my kids exposed to this poisonous and damaging topic. Well, I can uh, certainly appreciate your feelings there, but the government says they have to be. John Swinney says if schools don't do it, you'll pass a law and make them do it. So, if you don't want that, well, that's what the government wants. Please protect our children and teenagers from unsuitable educational materials. Quite right. So the parents begging the council to protect their children from the government's corrupting sex education materials. Will the council listen? We shall see. It needs to be age appropriate and tailored towards all pupils. Sometimes things don't need to be taught in schools. You only need a handful of lessons on trans and LGBT. It's enough to say what a lesbian gay man is, what gender is, what trans is. You don't need lessons on history, stonewall riots, etc, etc. I'm a lesbian saying this, uh, so it's not that I don't think children should be told about homosexuality or transgenderism. It's just not the most important issue in the world. Wise words indeed. Right, parents also raise issues of freedom of speech, freedom of religion. Uh, I would not like LGBT lifestyles to be taught about or promoted through PSE lessons. Uh, okay, quite agree. If you agree with that, then you need to be voting for a party that's not one of the ones in the Scottish Parliament, because all of the ones in the Scottish Parliament insist that that's exactly what needs to be happening in schools. Uh, far too, too much emphasis being put on sex education and sexual orientation, and not nearly enough in study helps and techniques. I can understand that. Just for a fair discussion and not just to be taught what is the current view on some issues. Absolutely, they're just the kids just have to sit there while the teachers preach to them the government's official line. Basically, that's what the government wants to happen in any case. Uh, another parent says, I don't actually know what's covered. Lack of communication. Yeah, because if parents did know the content, particularly of the rshp.scot resources, Almost all parents will be horrified by them and they would never get away with it. So what the government does, what it wants councils and schools to do, is instead of actually showing the resources, what they want them to do is to just describe them in the most bland and innocuous terms so parents don't actually realise what's going on. Right, another parent wants uh, that gender identity and sexual orientation do not get higher prominence within school life and lessons than all other subjects and issues. Right, another one. As a Christian parent, I want to ensure that all opinions are allowed and respected in PSE, including the traditional biblical view of marriage and other Christian viewpoints that society today may not agree with. Indeed. Uh, schools should not be pushing an LGBT agenda. Those who disagree with the lifestyle should feel free to express that opinion. Um, it's not necessarily the topics that are covered, but how they're handled. That's a really important point. Okay, the fact that they want to have a lesson on pornography, that's fine. I've taught lessons about pornography in school, but it's a very different message than the SMP's materials where the message is, have fun with porn. Uh, it's perfectly normal and natural. Go right ahead. Sorry, as the parent or guardian, as the principal educator in a child or young person's life, they should be allowed and trusted to decide how to best teach such sensitive issues as gender reassignment, marriage and relationships, for example. The world is ever changing and new research about the effects of all these issues are still being discovered. Please leave it up to families to deal with these issues and to talk to their young person within the security of their own home environment. 
trust that parents guardians will not ignore the issues just as they may not always approach them uh, in the same way that they would have been covered within the school setting hoping someone will listen to this with grateful thanks so counsel they're hoping someone's going to listen to them that they're begging for someone to listen to them um, but the government Scottish government certainly will not listen to them I mean their point is if you leave this to parents they might give a, who knows what views whereas if you do it in school everyone can get the official Scottish government position without fail uh, right I think this is um, back to teachers again this is all going a bit bonkers tail wagging the dog on so many levels give children back their childhood and allow them to be young young people whatever their gender without adding to their anxiety by stressing all the new and exciting ways that they can be different by showing them in PSE education and then drip down into other lessons has this been thought through well I think it has been thought through it's been thought through by radical LGBT activists and they've decided this is the best way to promote their agenda through the education system and the Scottish government has said sure if that's what you want that's what we'll do so it has been thought through as a deliberate strategy right so this teacher goes on to say I will discuss the work of gay artists with pupils in S4 to S6 um, when study when we study critical pieces I will not go out of my way to look for artwork of people who are gay or any other orientation and I will not mention number of partners number of children number of limbs color of skin religion unless it's relevant to the piece of artwork I do not think what I teach should be dictated to by a very and getting more vocal minority grouping spot on uh, I would say to the Scottish government to the Scottish government please let us be teachers that is what we do we should not be put in the dis uh, position of discussing gender changes or related behaviors in our classroom if we do not deliver PSE and we certainly should not be judged or assessed by a group of LGBTI people setting themselves up to be the first and last word in what constitutes education. So Western Isles Council, over to you. Take your pick. Are you going to wash your hands of the matter, just pass the book to schools, or are you going to listen to local parents and teachers instead of importing the values of the Scottish Parliament to the Western Isles? Or if you don't care about the views of local people, maybe at least you could take a stand on a matter of principle. You can protect children from confusion and corruption by rejecting the rshp.scot resources. If that's not something worth taking a stand over, I don't know what is.